Hi everyone, Daniel here again with another video in our ongoing series related to black line. Today I'll be taking you through what a typical reconciliation in Excel looks like today for many of you listening on and what that would look like if it were to be transformed using black line. I'll be taking you through some of Blackline's functionality and new concepts when reconciling in the platform. So let's take a further look. So I'll jump into the Excel version of the reconciliation. And let's talk through this. So at a glance of this reconciliation, it's easy to tell by the account name and some of the line descriptions that the nature of this account is actually for all of your accruals. But beyond that, there is little to no understanding, as to me, it lacks consistency. And to anyone but the preparer, such as senior management or even an auditor, many questions are left unanswered when initially glancing over this reconciliation. Talking from experience, this wreck to me was merely a mechanism of reconciling the balance. And beyond that, if the account was scrutinized, I would then perform ad hoc analysis as required, mostly identifying a journal or an adjustment was needed due to the lack of visibility. But as you can see here, given I was close to the detail of this particular rec, as the next preparer, I can explain the different groups of accruals you see on screen. We are seeing some accruals building up over time, with formulas in cells building out those balances, such as what you see on screen here. Uh, these are ordered accruals being built up over a period of time, with the formula embedded within the cell itself. We also see those p &L accruals, which are to be reversed out uh, day one of the next month, which are not easily distinguishable, being these ad hoc one month accruals below here, as well as items which uh, ultimately need to be journaled out at some point, but potentially because the GL posting in, e in the ERP is closed for this particular month, um, uh, ultimately a, a requirement will need to be posted in the next month as we can see with this other section of this rec down the very bottom. We also see the GL balances being driven by formulas um, from a report as you can see here. This GL balance is uh, ultimately being populated by a trial balance dump in the first tab as well as column O uh, dragging in prior period numbers copied into this column for you know month on month analysis. And I'm sure for many other accountants, speaking from experience, uh, this is this is ultimately key in understanding whether or not you have backed out your prior month accruals when reconciling these type of accounts. Furthermore, there is also missing support for some of the accruals, as well as crucial information such as comments pertaining to the aging of the items and expected closure, or for better terms, backing out of those supporting items. So now let's have a look at the same reconciliation now being recreated in Black Line. So now basically this is the same reconciliation, but just now sitting in black line. So just at a first glance, without drilling into any parts, it paints a far better standardized picture of the wreck itself for the preparer, but also any interested party in understanding what makes up that GL balance. Down to bottom, we have our total GL balances, which are brought in automatically from your ERP. So now you always have that comfort that you're trying to tie back to the correct closing balance that ultimately isn't driven by a formula. To substantiate and turn those numbers into something meaningful, you also have the ability to add comments and supporting documents at two levels of these reconciliations. So one at the individual line level, as you see here, the, the, the little picture of the document being attached to each individual line, as well as at the, the face of the rec also. Those accruals which build up over time can be input into a schedule and the balance drawn down automatically depending on the period that you're viewing the reconciliation for, as we can see up here, going back to our PwC example and drilling straight into the schedule that's been built out. So all of my accruals of the same nature that are running on a schedule are placed up the very top uh, that are underpinned by a schedule below the item itself. On the lower part of the schedule of the reconciliation, you can see all of those ad hoc accruals that don't need a schedule but rather a supporting item placed in with supporting attached as you could see here. Lastly, lightly touching on some of the other dimensions you see on screen. So Blackline gives you a freely definable date field 
called the origination date um, when you're inputting supporting items. What this date ultimately does is it drives reporting in Blackline, uh, which you can then analyze aged items across not only just this balance sheet, but all of your balance sheets across your company. Another date field option available to you when adding in these items in Blackline is the concept of a closeout date. So in the example here, if I drill into this flight accrual to a CTM travel report to show you case what the closeout date is actually driving, um, you could see here that I have a closeout date of the 1st of the 1st, 2023, which is the next day after the period end that I'm currently logged in as being the 31st of December, 2022. So what this date does is it drives the closure of the item itself uh, and it will automatically remove itself from the reconciliation driven by that date. <clears throat> so adding in that control piece when you're reversing out your accruals or even better, it adds insight into the storytelling of the rec when analyzing when a supporting item is no longer needed to support that GL balance. Last thing I'd like to touch on whilst in this particular detailed view of this supporting item is the concept of item classification. So we are now adding in items into Blackline. You're also adding in an, a classification alongside it. So an example of this would be if I had a required adjustment sitting on my reconciliation, which needed to be journaled out, um, being the net of an accrual versus sort of an actual invoice, um, I have the ability to classify it as a required adjustment. So what this ultimately means is that I can then run reports showing me where all my required adjustments sit across all of all of my reconciliations, as well as the aging of these adjustments, which are driven by that origination data I touched on earlier, ultimately giving far better oversight and analysis across my balance sheet as a whole. So that's all for now, and stay tuned for more videos like this to come. Thank you.